Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Alive. He's alive. Hallelujah. What an amazing time of year when we celebrate the most important moment of the entire history of the world. And I should know because I am the hopeful world. What was the most important moment in the entire history of the world? Well, it was the moment that God's people waited years and years and years and years for. Do you want to hear the story? The amazing, incredible story? God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son? You do? Well, great, because I'm going to tell you the whole Easter story. There are so many important moments in this story, but it all begins with Jesus. Do you know who this is? Oh, that's baby Jesus. I can tell, because I know he was born in a barn. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I've already told that story. How about we skip ahead a few years later when Jesus is all grown up doing amazing things all over the place. Jesus and his disciples went all over Israel, showing everyone what the kingdom of God was like. Do you know how he did that? <laughs> oh, that's easy. By teaching them. Well, yes, but also by doing amazing, unbelievable, incredible, unimaginable things called miracles. But, uh, what's a miracle? Miracles are signs that show people how powerful Jesus is. Let me tell you about three of his miracles. One night, Jesus was on a boat with his disciples when... Oh no! A huge storm has taken over the sea! We're going to sink! We're going to die! What are we going to do? Meanwhile, Jesus was... Sleeping? Like a baby. So, one of the disciples said... Uh, excuse me? Excuse me, Jesus? Yes? What is it? We're all going to die! So, Jesus sat up and said... Hmm, why are you so afraid? Then, he turned to the giant storm and said, Stop! And guess what happened? The storm stopped. Wow! Jesus spoke to the storm and it obeyed him. Yep. Jesus was showing his disciples that in the kingdom of God, we have nothing to fear because... Jesus is the king of everything. Yes, he is. Another time, Jesus was surrounded by thousands of people who had followed him far away from town, with no food to eat. Boy, am I hungry. Me too. Wish I'd brought a snack. Wish I'd brought two snacks. So, one of the disciples asked Jesus, Uh, excuse me, Jesus? Uh, how are we gonna feed all these people? Will this help? Five loaves of bread and two small fish? <laughs> Five loaves, two... <laughs> you can't feed thousands of people with this. Are you sure? Hmm. But Jesus took the boy's gift and prayed over it. 
then he started breaking pieces off and giving them to the people. And then there were more pieces. And more pieces. And more pieces. So many pieces that... Look! Every person got to eat as much as they wanted. Another miracle! The disciples must have been so surprised. Oh, they were. Jesus was giving them another sign. In God's kingdom, there is always enough. Enough food, enough warmth, enough love. Because Jesus is the king of everything. You're catching on. And another time, a desperate man ran to Jesus saying, My daughter is sick and dying. Can you please help her? By the time Jesus got to their house, the little girl had died. Oh, no! But Jesus said, Don't worry. She's okay. And the little girl came back to life, just like that. This was a sign that Jesus is king over sickness and disease. Jesus is the king of everything! Yes, he is. In the kingdom of God, there is no sickness or death. People must have been so excited. Oh, they were. But not all of them. Who wouldn't be excited about the miracles? I'll tell you. The religious leaders, the Pharisees. <laughs> we keep track of all the rules, and we're not excited at all. Yeah. Jesus is getting too popular. Some people even call him a king. We gotta do something about this. So, the Pharisees went to the Sadducees. We're the ones in charge of punishing the people that break the rules. Let's talk. The Pharisees and Sadducees didn't like all the amazing miracles Jesus was doing. How could they not be amazed by the miracles? Because they were too afraid Jesus would take over their jobs. Jesus is the king over everything. That's right. And God was about to use him to do the most incredible miracle of all time. Really? Yep. So the Pharisees and Sadducees began looking for a way to arrest Jesus, to stop him from doing the work his father had sent him to do. They tried to stop Jesus from what God wanted him to do. Hmm, those Pharisees and Sadducees were really sneaky. Oh, and the incredible thing that God was going to do? What do you think that could be? It was an even more incredible miracle than making blind people see and calming storms. You'll have to wait and see what that miracle was, because first Jesus and his disciples traveled to a celebration. It was time for Jesus and his disciples to celebrate the Passover. Passover? What is Passover? Do you remember when God sent Moses to rescue the Israelites from Egypt? Oh, yes. God sent frogs and flies and darkness and other things. It was pretty crazy. It was. God sent plague after plague, ten plagues. But Pharaoh still refused to let God's people go. He said, No, I will not let God's people go. So it was time for Pharaoh to see just how powerful God can be. What happened next? God told Moses to have every Israelite family prepare a lamb for a special meal, and then take some of the blood from that lamb and put it over the door of their houses. Why would God tell them to do that? Because, for the last plague, God would send an angel to take the life of every firstborn son of the Egyptians. The angel would pass over the homes of the Israelites who had the blood of the lamb over their doors. So, the blood of the lamb saved the sons of the Israelites. And ever since that day, 
The Israelites have celebrated Passover with a special meal, just like the one they had that night in Egypt when the angel passed over their homes many, many years earlier. I get it now. So, Jesus and his disciples traveled to Jerusalem where many people gathered to celebrate Passover. And something very wonderful happened when he got there. Oh, really? What? As Jesus rode into the city on a donkey, a big crowd of people came to meet him. They knew who he was? Yes, they were so excited. They waved palm branches and then laid them down in front of him. That's funny. What did they do that for? It was their way of honoring Jesus. Like a welcome mat. That's so cool. And then they shouted, Hosanna! Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! It was like a parade. A parade for a king. Everyone was so happy. Wait! 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 Stop everything! We're not happy at all. Not one teeny bit. Ah, yes. The Pharisees and Sadducees. Those religious leaders weren't happy. They were very nervous. Hey! Jesus is such a troublemaker. If the Romans hear people calling him king, they will send their soldiers to throw us in prison. We need to stop Jesus and his followers. So they came up with a secret plan to hurt Jesus. Oh no, they can't hurt Jesus. Don't worry, even this was part of God's plan. Later that night, Jesus and his disciples got together to eat the Passover meal, just like they did every year. But this year was different. During the meal, Jesus got up and washed his disciples' feet to show them what it really means to love and serve others. Then, Jesus said something that surprised them all. One of you is going to turn against me. Oh no! Why did he say that? Uh, he knew that one of them was helping the Pharisees and Sadducees. Were the disciples surprised? For sure. They looked at each other and said, Who could it be? Jesus knew what was going to happen. He wanted to prepare his followers. So he took a piece of bread and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Then he picked up his cup and said, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, poured out for you. What did he mean by that? What does cov... cov... Uh, covenant. What does that mean? A covenant is a promise. Many years before, God had made a covenant, a promise, to bless his people. Now, Jesus was saying that God was going to make a new covenant with them. He was going to bless them in a new way. But when he said, This is my body. This is my blood. It sounded like this new covenant had something to do with Jesus dying, and it did. What do you mean? Why would Jesus have to die? Remember when the angel in Egypt saw the blood of the lamb over the door? What did he do? Um, he passed over the house. And the people were safe. Jesus was saying that now his body and blood would save them. He was saying that he was the new Passover lamb. Whoa! The disciples could not believe their ears. Then, after dinner, Jesus took some of his disciples and went to a garden to pray. He knew what he had to do next, and he knew it was not going to be easy. After a while, he said, The hour has come. And just at that moment, one of his disciples arrived, leading a group of soldiers sent by the Sadducees to arrest Jesus. Which disciple was it? The disciple named Judas. Now everyone knew who had turned against Jesus. With the help of Judas, the Pharisees and Sadducees arrested Jesus. <gasps> just like they planned. But you know what? 
things did not go the way they planned. I told you those Pharisees and Sadducees were sneaky. They turned Jesus' own friend Judas against him. And Judas helped them arrest Jesus. It must have been so scary and sad for all the other disciples. But Jesus loves us so much, he knew what he had to do. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. The Pharisees and Sadducees thought they were stopping Jesus from doing all those miracles, but boy oh boy, were they wrong. Jesus was going around doing the work God had sent him to do, healing people, <laughs> and teaching them all about the kingdom of God. But the Pharisees and Sadducees thought Jesus was getting too popular, so they had him arrested in the middle of the night. Oh no! What did they do to him? They asked him a lot of questions. Are you the Son of God? Do you think you are equal to God? Jesus didn't say anything, but the religious leaders didn't care if he answered or not. They accused him anyway. He is guilty of blasphemy! 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 Blasphemy? What does that even mean? Blasphemy is when someone says untrue things about God. The Pharisees and Sadducees accused Jesus of saying he was God. According to the Pharisees and Sadducees, there was only one way a person could pay for that. What was it? Going to jail? No, death. No! There was a problem for the Pharisees and Sadducees, though. What? Even if the Pharisees and Sadducees said Jesus was guilty, they weren't allowed to kill anyone. Only Roman leaders could do that. So they took him to the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate. Wait, what? Pancho the Pilate? Not a Pilate, Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor. And when he saw Jesus and his accusers, he was a little confused. <laughs> Are they upset? <laughs> what have you done that has made everyone so angry? Again, Jesus didn't say anything. So Pilate turned to the religious leaders and said, I don't see anything wrong with this man. Well, according to our rules, he needs to die. Now, Pilate had a problem. Hmm, Jesus doesn't deserve to die, but... But if he gets more popular, I don't want the Pharisees and Sadducees to complain about me to the other Roman leaders. So, what did he do? He thought there was only one way to keep his job as Roman governor. Hmm. Well, what are you going to do? Uh, bring me some water. I wash my hands of this situation. This is not my fault. So... Pilate ordered that Jesus be killed on a wooden cross, because... According to our laws, he deserves to die. <gasps> that is so sad. Jesus didn't deserve to die on the cross. No, he didn't. But he went to the cross anyway. And as he was dying, he continued to show love and mercy by saying, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. The sky turned very dark, and Jesus said, It is finished. Jesus died. Then the ground began to shake, and a Roman guard standing nearby said, This man must have been the Son of God. But where were the disciples? All of Jesus' friends? His mother was with him, and a few of his friends. The others probably didn't know what to think. 
How could Jesus be the Messiah, the blessing for the whole world, if he wasn't even alive? This part is sad. I know that Jesus had to die so he could heal the whole world from sin. But it is still so, so sad. <sighs> Jesus gave his life for us. And it was only the beginning of the most amazing miracle of all. Jesus had done some amazing things while he was living. Like lots of miracles. That's right. Stop! And he'd shown everyone that God the Father was very loving and good and powerful. He had also promised that the kingdom of God was near. He'd given everyone a taste of that kingdom through those miracles. What's the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is when the whole world will be made new again the way God had always wanted it to be. Jesus promised that someday, in the kingdom of God, there will be no sin or sadness or sickness or death. What is sin again? Sin is when we ignore God and go our own way. Sin is when we say, I don't care what you say. I'm going to do it my way. And remember, because God is good and sin is bad, the price we pay for our sin is being apart from God. Oh, so in the kingdom of God, there will be no sin or sadness or sickness. In the kingdom of God, there will be nothing to be afraid of, not even death. But Jesus had just died. Ah, so it seemed like none of those promises were coming true. But that was not the case. Really? What do you mean? You see, something more amazing was happening that Jesus' enemies didn't realize. When he died on the cross, Jesus took all of our sin on himself. He did? You see, since our sin turns us away from God, there can be no sin in the kingdom of God. So, Jesus had to fix the problem of sin. And he did that by dying on the cross? Yes. By dying on the cross, Jesus paid the price for our sins. Yours, mine, everyone's. Wow! Jesus really loves us. He sure does. But... Another question? What about all the things that he said about the kingdom? I still don't get it. If Jesus was dead, how could any of those promises come true? That's a really good question. With an even better answer. Because he didn't stay dead. didn't stay dead? That sounds like a pretty incredible miracle to me. I told you this story was amazing, and he paid the price for all of our sin. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Now, where were we? Oh, right, the sad part. Jesus had died after his own friend Judas turned against him. Jesus had been betrayed. He was arrested and put to death on a cross. It was a sad day. Yes, Jesus gave his life for us. The sun had gone down, and it was time to bury him. Only his mom and a few friends were there. You remembered. So, what did they do? 
they got help from a man. I am Joseph from Arimathea, a follower of Jesus. I am very sad that Jesus has died. I have been waiting for the kingdom he spoke of to come. I want to do something nice for him, to show Jesus how much I loved him. So Joseph did something special. He went to Pontius Pilate. I want to take care of Jesus' body. I want to give him a grave. All right, go ahead. Now, when important people died in Israel, they were not buried in the ground. Really? No, their bodies were placed in special tombs that were carved out of solid rock. Do you mean like a cave? Like a small cave. Well, Joseph had one that he was going to use someday. But guess what? He decided to give it to Jesus. So, Jesus' body was placed inside Joseph's tomb, and then a big rock was rolled in front of the cave, so no one could get in. And then... Someone is here to see you, Pilot. Oh, it's you again. Yep, we're back! You didn't think we'd give up that easily, did you? <sighs> what do you want? Look, Jesus said that he would come back from the dead. And? Well, what if his friends go to the tomb, move the rock, and take his body and then say, Jesus is alive? Hmm. That would cause a lot of trouble for you, Pilot. Hmm, I never thought of that. So Pilot put guards outside the tomb to make sure no one moved the rock. Eyes peeled. We don't want anyone to move this rock. Yeah, no one's going to get past us. No, sir. Wow, so the Pharisees and the Sadducees were still worried about Jesus? Yep. You see, when Jesus was alive, he said, In three days, I will rise from the dead. Well, Jesus had died and was buried on a Friday. That's day one. All day Saturday, his body lay in Joseph's tomb with the guards keeping watch. That was day two? Right. So Sunday morning comes around. Day three! and two women who were Jesus' friends made their way to the tomb to put spices and perfume on his body, cause that was something that people did in those days. When all of a sudden... Ah! Whoa, whoa, whoa! What happened? What, what happened? happened? An earthquake shook the ground, and an angel appeared. Ah! Oh, yeah! Oh. The angel rolled away the rock. When the women arrived, there lay the two soldiers, passed out on the ground. There lay the rock, and there, well, there was no Jesus. Don't be afraid. Oh, uh, okay. I know you're looking for Jesus, but he isn't here. He has risen. Just like he said he would, Jesus is alive. What? What? The women were so excited. They wanted to go tell their other friends what happened, when suddenly... Don't be afraid. Jesus showed up? He sure did. No way! Yes way. Later, Jesus appeared to all his disciples. He explained to them why he had to die. He told them the great news that death has no power in God's kingdom. And then, when it was time for him to leave, he said, From now on, you will be the ones telling others about my kingdom. I will send you a helper who will fill you with the power of God. You will do amazing things. And then, Jesus rose up into the sky. Amazing! The disciples were very excited. 
They didn't really know what would happen next, but they knew one thing. Jesus was sending them a helper who would help them in a mighty big way. He's alive! He's alive! Jesus is alive! He defeated sin and death! Hallelujah! miracle ever! Jesus saved the whole world from sin, and God wasn't done yet! Jesus said he would send a helper so his friends could do incredibly amazing things too. But that's a whole nother story we'll save for another day. This is the story of Easter, when God gave his one and only son because he loved the world so much. Yes, Jesus loves me! more Laugh and Grow Bible? What do you mean? Sign up for Minnow and get more Bible stories and loads more amazing shows. Wow! How cool is that? Minnow is a great place to stream Christian shows for kids. Amazing! Download the Minnow app and start your free trial today. Yay! Jerusalem was packed. People from all over the Roman Empire were visiting for a celebration. But Jesus' disciples were nowhere to be found. Really? Why? You see, after Jesus died on the cross, they had gotten some good news and some sad news. What was the good news? Jesus was alive! Yes, yes, yes! That was good news! And, uh, what was the sad news? Jesus was going to leave them. Oh. But there was also some other good news. Good! Oh, double good! What was it? It was time for Jesus' friends to spread the good news about his kingdom. But that's a ginormous job! Which is why Jesus left them with even more good news. Jesus promised to send his followers a helper. A helper? Who? No one knew. So, for the time being, Jesus' friends hid in Jerusalem, waiting and praying. They hid? They didn't want the Pharisees and Sadducees coming after them like they had come after Jesus. So, they were trying very hard not to attract too much attention. I get it. One day passed, then two, then... We've been praying for three days, and still no sign of the Helper. What should we do? What Jesus told us to do, I guess. So they continued to pray. Four days passed, five... Six, seven, eight. It's been nine days. What should we do? Then, 
on the tenth day, boom! Boom? A sound like a huge wind filled the house. And something that looked like little flames of fire appeared over their heads. Ah! What was it? The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. Whoa! Was the Holy Spirit the helper Jesus promised? Yes, the helper had come. Amazing! And something even more amazing happened. Because as the disciples were filled with God's Spirit, they began to praise God. And... Great is the Lord! And Hordovan Burstogast! Huh? What did you say? Hordovan Burstogast! Bashian the Stoy Espisur! Hey, how do you know that language? Everyone in the room began speaking in different languages that they did not know. Whoa! That was really helpful because, remember, during those days, people from all over the Roman world were visiting Jerusalem. Suddenly, they were hearing all about Jesus in their own language. It was a miracle! Hey, everybody! Have I got news for you! Wait, I thought Jesus' friends were all hiding. Not anymore. God's helper helped them to be brave. Peter boldly told the people all about Jesus. And guess what? There's more? <laughs> oh, yes. The crowd was so amazed with Peter's message that, well, guess how many of them became followers of Jesus that day? Oh, uh, let's see. Ten? <laughs> Higher. Twenty? Higher. Thirty? Forty? Sixty? One hundred? Three thousand! What? Yep. Then, Jesus' disciples started bravely talking about Jesus all over Jerusalem. Everyone must have been amazed. They were, except for, well, you know who. Yep. Still us! The Pharisees and Sadducees! And just as grumpy as ever! Hey! You better stop talking about Jesus or... or... or we'll arrest you! They threatened the disciples, but the disciples went on telling people about Jesus anyway. Because Jesus sent them the Helper? Yes, for the first time ever, God's spirit and power were available for all of Jesus' followers. And with that power, they would go out and change the world. Do you want more Laugh and Grow Bible? What do you mean? Sign up for Minnow and get more Bible stories and loads more amazing shows. Wow! How cool is that? Minnow is a great place to stream Christian shows for kids. Amazing! Download the Minnow app and start your free trial today. Yay! For Saul. Jesus' disciples were very busy in Jerusalem. The Holy Spirit had come and they were boldly sharing the good news Jesus died for our sins with everybody. I'd like to follow Jesus. I'd like to follow Jesus too. Wow, so many followers. Yep, and now it was time to spread the good news all over the Roman world. How would they do that? Oh, God had someone special in mind for the job. Peter? Nope. John? No. Andrew? Matthew? James? Simon? Bartholomew? <laughs> no, it was a man named... Saul. Also known as... Paul. 
Saul was his Hebrew name, but outside of Israel, people knew him as Paul. So Saul was Paul? Yep, and he was also a Pharisee. <gasps> and like all good Pharisees, I want to make sure everybody follows all the rules, all the time. Remember, the Pharisees thought Jesus was breaking all the rules. So, they had worked with the Sadducees to have him arrested. They wanted to hurt Jesus, and they did. Right. Well, Saul was so concerned about the rules that after Jesus died, he made it his job to... Arrest him! Arrest her! Arrest them! I'm making it my job to arrest as many of Jesus' followers as I can! Ha 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 So Saul, who was Paul, was a Pharisee? And an enemy of Jesus! But how could God use an enemy of Jesus to spread the good news about him all over the world? Because even though Paul was going one way, God was about to turn him around. How? By stopping him in his tracks. You see, one day, Saul was traveling to a town called Damascus, hoping to find more of Jesus' disciples. I'm gonna arrest him. I'm gonna lock him up. I'm gonna. When arrest suddenly. A bright light hit him right in the face. Oh! A bright light? A very bright light. And then a voice from heaven said, Saul, why are you trying to hurt me? Who was it? That's what Saul wanted to know. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are trying to hurt. Jesus was talking to Saul? Uh, I mean, Paul? Wow, he must have been so surprised. And even more so when he realized that, I can't see, I can't see a thing. Suddenly, Saul was blind. Then, Jesus told him to go to Damascus anyway and wait there. Why? Because Jesus had a follower there named Ananias. Jesus spoke to Ananias in a dream and told him to go find Saul. You mean the man that came to arrest us? The one who hasn't stopped making trouble? That mean man? Why do you want me to find him? Then Jesus said, He is the one I'm going to use to spread the good news about me to everyone, to Jews and those that aren't Jews, and even to kings. So, what did Ananias do? He trusted Jesus. So, when he found Saul, he prayed for him and something amazing happened. I can see! I can see! Wow! Then, something even more amazing happened. What? Saul became a follower of Jesus. Double wow! And then, something even way more amazing happened. What could that be? Hey, hey, Jesus is the Son of God. Hey, you, Jesus is the Son of God. He started telling everyone about Jesus. So, Saul went from being Jesus' enemy... To being Paul, Jesus' friend. And more importantly, a disciple. I've got to tell everybody about Jesus. Anywhere. Everywhere! Whatever Paul did, he did with his whole heart. And now that he met Jesus, he was ready for God to use him to turn the Roman world... Whoa! ...upside down. Do you want more Laugh and Grow Bible? What do you mean? Sign up for Minnow and get more Bible stories and loads more amazing shows. Wow! How cool is that? Minnow is a great place to stream Christian shows for kids. Amazing! Download the Minnow app and start your free trial today. Yay!
Paul's Travels. Do you remember Saul? You mean Saul, who was also Paul, but Jesus appeared to him and changed his life forever. So he ran around telling everyone about Jesus? That's the one. God really knew what he was doing when he chose him. <laughs> he sure did. First of all, Paul was really smart. As a Pharisee, he had spent years studying and memorizing God's law and the stories of Israel. Second, he spoke Hebrew, the language of Israel. Shalom! And he also spoke Greek, the language of the Roman Empire. Shirete! And there was one more thing that made Paul perfect for the job. Really? What? He was a Roman citizen, which meant... I can travel anywhere. Paul could go everywhere in the Roman world and talk to anyone about... Jesus! Right. So, Paul grabbed his things and... I'm hitting the road. Ciao! See ya! Because of Paul's travels, groups of Jesus followers were popping up everywhere. They were given a new name, Christians, which means little Christs. And they began meeting together in groups we now call churches. Wow, how great is that? Very great, though it wasn't always great. It wasn't? Sometimes Paul was attacked by people that wanted him to stop talking about Jesus. Other times, he was arrested and thrown in jail. That... that's terrible! Yes, but God helped Paul in those hard times. Really? Yep. One time he was on a ship, and guess what happened? Uh-oh. Don't tell me it sank! It did! It did! But... Paul and the crew made it to an island where the local people helped them. Phew, that was nice. It was, but then as Paul was building a fire, he got bit by... <gasps> a poisonous a snake! Oh no, a snake? That's really terrible! He's a goner! But you know what Paul did? He trusted God. He shook the snake off and kept on working. He did? Uh-huh. When nothing happened to Paul, the people realized that they had seen... A miracle! They were so excited that they brought sick people to Paul and... God healed them! Wow! So, you see, even in the hard times, Paul was filled with joy. God gave Paul the strength to be happy if he was full or if he was hungry, if he had money or if he had none. If he was free or if he was in jail. No matter how many hard things happened to Paul, he could be happy knowing God was with him. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, on the other hand, were not happy. And you know why. Paul was supposed to be arresting Jesus' followers. Yes, but instead he was helping churches grow all over the place. So, the Pharisees and Sadducees had Paul thrown in jail. And there, he found out something really bad. Uh-oh, what? They were planning to kill him. <gasps> That's the most terrible... What did Paul do? I am a Roman citizen. I appeal unto Caesar. Appeal to Caesar? What does that mean? I'll explain. Remember that Paul was a Roman citizen? By appealing to Caesar, the Roman ruler at the time, he was asking for Roman protection. So, Paul was sent all the way to Rome, where Caesar lived. Now, all he had to do was wait for his turn to tell Caesar about Jesus. But... Caesar was a little busy, so Paul sat in jail for two whole years. Two years? What did he do all that time? Since he couldn't go out and tell people about Jesus... I wrote letters. Letters? Yes, 
lots of letters that help churches learn how to be followers of Jesus. You've probably seen some of Paul's letters in the Bible, like Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. Oh, what's Philippians about? That one was all about joy, and it was written to the Christians in Philippi. Because Paul was full of joy, no matter what. It sure sounds like he stayed busy. <laughs> yes, busy for Jesus, even when he was in jail. Wow, God really helped Paul turn something that was terrible into something very good. Yes, he did. He sure did. Do you want more Laugh and Grow Bible? What do you mean? Sign up for Minnow and get more Bible stories and loads more amazing shows. Wow, how cool is that? Minnow is a great place to stream Christian shows for kids. Amazing! Download the Minnow app and start your free trial today. Yay! From wrong to right. When Paul was in jail in Rome, he had a lot of time on his hands. Since he couldn't go out and tell people about Jesus, he wrote lots of letters to help the churches. Yes, you remembered. And in one of those letters, Paul wrote, We are justified by grace through faith. Something wrong? It's just that, well... I have no idea what that means. Oh, that's okay. Some of Paul's letters were a little hard to understand. I'll explain what Paul meant when he said, We are justified by grace through faith. <laughs> Let's begin with the word justified. Let's say someone goes to the store to get some bananas. These bananas are great! Put the bananas down. Okay. You didn't pay for those bananas. I sure did. You heard the alarm. You did not. I did. Did not. You are wrong. I am? No, she's right. Here's the receipt. She paid for the bananas. It's right for her to take them home. Oh, I see. So, she's not wrong. She's right. She is justified. It's justified done nothing wrong. It seemed like the girl did something wrong, but the owner said that what she did was right. So, she was justified. Right. And what about grace? What does that mean? The word grace means undeserved favor. Those are just more big words. I still don't get it. Well, favor means kindness. So grace or undeserved favor means you have been given a kindness, a gift that you didn't earn. For example, I finished mowing the lawn, Grandpa. And you've done a great job. Here's the money I said I'd pay you. Yahoo! Did the boy deserve that money? For sure. He earned it. Yes, he did. Now, what if this happens? You're such a wonderful grandson. Here's a little money for you to buy something you like. It's just a gift because I love you. Wow! Thanks, Grandpa! Did the boy earn the money this time? No. The money was a gift. Right, and that's exactly what grace is, a gift that you didn't earn. And what is the gift that Paul was talking about that we haven't earned? Well, it's much better than money. The gift we haven't earned is friendship with God. Friendship with God? Yes, a forever kind of friendship. Today, tomorrow, and someday in a world without sadness or sickness. A world made right. 
That sounds amazing! It is! God wants to spend forever with us! And only one thing will keep us away from this forever kind of friendship! What is that? Sin! Remember that sin turns us away from God. It breaks our friendship with Him. To be friends with God, we need to have our labels changed from wrong to right. Like the girl in the supermarket. Yes, but you see, we can't change our own labels. That is why Jesus came. It's why he died on the cross. When Jesus took our sins, he took our labels that said wrong and put them on himself. Then he took his own label that said right and put it on us. Jesus justified us. Wow. Jesus loves us so much. He does. And because of what he did, we are... Justified! By grace through faith. And what is faith? Faith is trusting that Jesus will do what he said he would do. Faith is believing the good news about Jesus and the forever kind of friendship that we can have with him. Our labels are changed from wrong to right. Right. Wow, I'm so glad Jesus loves us so much. Do you want more Laugh and Grow Bible? What do you mean? Sign up for Minnow and get more Bible stories and loads more amazing shows. Wow, how cool is that? Minnow is a great place to stream Christian shows for kids. Amazing! Download the Minnow app and start your free trial today. Yay!